Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Kai. And, and we, we founded, founded Stick'em. And at Stick'em, our mission is to bring quality STEAM education to every child. Today, we're doing a workshop where they're going to be building robotics and learning about STEAM. From time to time, we conduct these workshops to test out like new activities that we're doing, new lessons that we'll be putting online, so that when we pass it on to the teachers, when we put it on an online platform for the teachers to use, it has been tested to work. There's two parts to it. So the first part is the more technical stuff. So electronics, how do we make a robot move? How do we make all these different connectors come together? But I think the higher level part is soft skills. So problem solving, teamwork, communication. I think it was really unique. Like I've never really done anything like that before. And Korea isn't super like robotics focused. So I think coming to Singapore and doing this, it was a really cool experience. The way we get the kids interested in our products is for them to be able to express themselves creatively, giving them the freedom to really have fun and get a little bit messy. And in classes, you're going to see this. It's quite common. But I guess because of the lesson plans, the way the classes are aligned, the teachers will be able to have this thing called the control chaos. We want these experiences to be fun so that they can enjoy the lesson while learning in the process. Okay. We created Stick'em because right now, there are nearly a billion children who are growing up without access to quality STEAM education, especially in their earlier years, like primary school, lower secondary. Current STEAM education infrastructure is either too expensive or too complex for cohort-wide usage in school. Second big issue is that there's a lot of teachers that are very overloaded and very busy with their schedules, and they're not able to kind of create meaningful um, programs for their students. So we created Stick'em with these two things in mind by creating a very low-cost STEAM kit and we paired this with a ready-to-use curriculum and materials for teachers. Tickum started September 16, 2020, and it all came from a sketch and an idea. I sent a text to two of my primary school friends. I said, hey, um, do you guys want to help me create this? It's going to, help. It's going to take like 15 minutes. I knew Adam because um, he used to be my senior from robotics. So he's a few years older than me, and I will always see him at uh, robotics competitions as this very intense um, team that was always winning stuff. I was on the Joker team, so we're the ones that are messing around, never winning things. So I knew that he was very strong in robotics and he was quite detail-oriented. So I also texted him, hey, you want to come and join me and help us build something? When we started, we had like five founders, and all of us did everything. I still remember when I had like three different printers just running non-stop in my house. In the middle of the night, the alarm would ring and then I'll be like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And since then, after we started moving into SUTD, we bought more printers and we had a lot of support from like my friends from SUTD who came down to help us maintain the printers, run the printers, and also make sure that uh, we have the time to actually talk to more customers, talk to more teachers, get their feedback, conduct more, conduct more workshops. And since then, we, now we have a team of 14 people. Me and Adam are currently full-time. Um, I just finished my national service and Adam just finished university. But we have two other co-founders, Singan and Kai Jia, who are currently just starting university. And we feel like it's important for them to go through university because they're more technical. So there's a lot of stuff that they have to learn about, whether coding, hardware engineering, and how product design comes together. I think our big break was River Hong Pao, where we pitched the idea to a panel of judges, and we got the opportunity to test this, or sell this, and at an actual um, festival at Gardens by the Bay. So this is where things started picking up because there were parents coming by, I think we got around 100 plus orders. Yeah, 150 um, orders. Yeah, which was quite insane for our size. We weren't expecting so many. But this was a great way to kind of validate, okay, this is our first round. And I think that showed us that if people are willing to pay for this really cruddy prototype that works but not really, then imagine if we develop this much further. This, perfect. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is good. So as a social enterprise, and also being a university student, we have access to quite a lot of like um, programs and challenges that can help us in the funding portion. So when we're students, we don't have a lot of cash to start with. And that's why we initially started with the Maple Trees River Hong Pao event. Then that led to the Youth Action Challenge, which got us like about $80,000. We were so lucky on that. Also opened doors to programs like Create for Good, which also gave us like $50,000 in grant. And he is also part of the Philip Yu Initiative, which got us like $20,000. The Singapore ecosystem for ground-up initiatives, 
for um, social enterprises, youth that are trying to start social enterprises, there's a very strong um, supporting system behind that. So currently there are 9,000 plus children using Stickum across 11 countries and we've trained around 1,200 plus teachers. And this is purely through um, word of mouth. We have zero ad spend on marketing. I just came back from Indonesia um, a few days ago and we were able to train 225 teachers for the first time using Stickum by myself. So one trainer, 225 teachers in a big hall. And I think this is probably not possible with a lot of products, but I think the way that we've designed both our slides in terms of instructional design and also our hardware, it comes to a point where it's so simple, everything is there that yeah, the next term when they want to start doing hands-on learning, everyone's like, oh yeah, let's do the stickum thing. And what's the current NPS score? So we currently have an NPS score of nine. So out of 150 teachers, 90% of them will very, very confidently recommend stickum to their fellow teachers, which I think getting, getting a recommendation from a fellow teacher is much stronger than us saying, hey, we have this great product, come try it, come try it. So right now we are in about 15% of the primary schools in Singapore and in this, by the end of this financial year, we're aiming to hit about 25% of the primary school and the secondary schools in Singapore. And by the next financial year, which will be around April 2027, we're hoping to be in about 40% of all the schools in Singapore. So we have distributors in Vietnam, uh, Philippines, India and Indonesia. These distributors bring the cultural um, or local knowledge, so it's better to work with them to get our product into the schools. Uh, we became operationally profitable in April 2025 and we are going to continue to engage as many more schools as we can. But at the same time, with this um, extra money that we have, we are going to reinvest it into our product R&D. And we are reinvesting this into Stick'em 2.0 and it's going to be a whole new game changer. But I'm not going to say much here. You guys will see it in 2026. So this is our first version of the um, electronics board. You can see it's like 3D printed with, into a big box and inside, you see it's just like off-the-shelf Arduino. Like this is a typical Arduino board and this is just a shield. Like probably like a secondary school can make this on their own. Then from this, we realized that it was too bulky and it's like very hard for the, it's very easy for the cases to come off. This is, uh, I think, uh, one of our first versions of the custom PCB. So this one, we moved from an Arduino Nano to a ESP board. Then finally, with the necessary knowledge, we were able to like make it a lot cleaner. So this way we have made it incrementally um, a lot more user-friendly for the kids and the teachers to use. SUTD has done so much to help us on our Stickum journey. Besides the academics, um, they also helped us with um, grant funding, competitions, and they also provided us with very essential space, operating space that we could make use of to manufacture and produce all these things. When I was six years old, that's when I built my first ever robot. It was a Mars rover kit. And this was when I was back in Korea in primary one. Then I came over to Singapore. And again, I went to a primary school and I fell in love with the robotics club. I was like, I want to grow up and become an engineer, a robotics engineer, because that's what I love doing. And I have been doing that for the past nine years. And right after I came out of NS, um, I was interning at a venture capital called Mistletoe and they were supporting all these entrepreneurs that are really trying to change the world. Looking at them, just a team of two individuals really trying to change the world inspired me so much and I was like, that's what I want to do. And the moment the first opportunity came up to me with um, Kai asking me, hey, this is what I'm doing. Can you help me with this? And I was like, yeah, my expertise in robotics and my knowledge and experience with all these startups. I was like, hell yeah, man, let's do this. I mean, Kai, like, for example, he's full-timing Stickum after he ORDs. He's going to put his university studies on hold for now. I just graduated last month and my plan is to um, commit full-time to Stickum. And right now we have a really good momentum going. But I think in the grand scheme of things, on a global scale, I think we are fighting against time. Societies are changing really fast. And there is a whole group of children out there, our next generation, who is not going to be able to keep up with this level of technology if we just maintain the status quo. So besides just growing a company as fast as possible, we really feel that we need to create this impact and bring this to the kids out there as fast as we can. So this is our level of commitment because this company is really like our baby, it's like our brainchild and we really want to see it succeed.